So before we get started today, I just wanted to share just a little bit of a funny story with you. And just realizing that kids, <laughs> kids really do say the darndest things. Like I know that used to be a TV show, but in case you're just now catching a podcast for the first time, uh, me and my wife, Rebecca, have a almost three-year-old daughter. And we live in a small country town. Like we literally have a, a stoplight, excuse me, not even a stoplight, a caution light with a stop sign, a gas station, a grill, a Dollar General, and they just recently threw one of the uh, Family Dollar Dollar Tree combos up right across the street from Dollar General. So, yeah, I mean, just a small little farm town pretty much is what it is. Um, but so my, my wife and my daughter went out to eat with my wife's dad for lunch the other day, and they go to the grill right here in town. And uh, I guess my, my wife and my daughter were up at the cash register ordering their food. And this, this man walks in and, and this, he's an older gentleman, but he, he walked in. My wife told me this story. And if it was me, like I probably would have crawled under the table and you'll see why. But this, this gentleman walks in to, to order his food and he's had a, a tracheotomy. So of course a three-year-old doesn't have a clue what that is. And she's probably never seen that, but she's very observant. And she looked at my wife and looked at this man and looked back at my wife and looked back at this man and said, Mommy, why is he wearing a leash? Oh, goodness. Um, it's, it's, uh, Rebecca said she all she could do is just kind of like chuckle because it's cute because she doesn't know. And the, she said the man didn't hear it. And if he did, I'm sure he was a good sport about it. But just straight up, Mommy, why is that man wearing a leash? Like he's some kind of dog, bless his heart. But if, if that had been me, I probably would have laughed and wanted to crawl under the table. But it's just so funny just the way that their brains think. And I just wanted to share that, that little bit of a funny, funny story with you because I thought it was pretty hilarious. Just to lighten the mood a little bit as we get started on today. So today we're going to be talking about freedom and honesty and the truth. And I'm going to start off with this right here. And then from there, we're going to move on. But I want to start off with just some verses out of the Bible about truth and honesty. So Proverbs 12, 19 says, Truthful words stand the test of time, but lies are soon exposed. Proverbs 11.3 tells us that good people are guided by their honesty. Treacherous people are destroyed by their dishonesty. Philippians chapter 4 verse 8 says, And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true, honorable, right, pure, lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. And then the last one that I'm going to share is John chapter 8 verse 32. And that tells us, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Think about those for a minute, chew on that, digest it, let it sink in, and uh, we'll be right back. Thank you for tuning in today. Get ready for an epic journey into the heart of manhood with Manhood Unveiled. Join Zeth Lee as he guides you through the gripping tales of fatherhood, the resilient bonds of marriage, the roads of vulnerability and overcoming temptation. Brace yourself for an odyssey of growth, connection, unwavering spirit, and faith. This is not just a podcast. This is Manhood Unveiled, where the story of manhood unfolds like never before. Hello again and welcome back to another episode, matter of fact, episode three of Manhood Unveiled. My name is Zeth Lee and I am your guide on this journey through the intricate paths of manhood. And today's episode is going to be a liberating exploration into the power of honesty and truth. You know, in a world that often encourages masks and pretenses, there's an undeniable freedom that comes with embracing our true selves. And today we're going to be delving deep into the profound impact that honesty and truth can have on our lives, our relationships, and most importantly, on our own sense of self. And whether it's the, the honesty that we share with our loved ones or the truth we confront within ourselves, or even the authenticity that we, we bring to our daily lives, 
there's always this transformative power that lies in being genuine. And it's about unburdening ourselves from the weight of these false pretenses and stepping into the liberating light of the truth. So throughout this episode, we're going to discuss the the impact of transparent communication on relationships, and we're going to explore the personal growth that comes from facing our own truths. So this is not just about telling the truth to others, but really and truly, yeah, I mean, that's very important. But in order to do that, we got to start being honest with ourselves. And it's about understanding that in the tapestry of manhood, the threads of truth are going to weave a story of strength, resilience, and authenticity. That's a hard word to say. Authenticity. There we go. English is hard. So my friends, let's buckle up for this soul-stirring conversation on Manhood Unveiled. Let's explore the freedom that comes with honesty and truth. Thank you for joining me on this quest for authenticity. Ha, I got it right that time. And let's dive right into the heart of today's episode. But before we get started, just like I did in episode two, and I would like to make this a normal thing, let's just start with a prayer. So we're, we're going we're gonna to start off, we're going to open up in prayer here, and then we're going to jump right into lying, honesty, and the truth. Father, we come to you today, and once again, we just want to thank you for this opportunity. I would like to thank you for this opportunity to learn and to inform and to share my story and my struggles and the struggles that you have helped me get through and that you help me get through every single day. And Father, I just ask that that you anoint me, Father, from, from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet and that it's not my words, but your words coming out through me, God. And, and I just ask that anybody and everybody hears this story and hears this message that needs to hear it, and that anybody and everybody can, can get something out of this story and out of this message, God, that they, can, that they can put into use in their own life, and that they can see what you're trying to do in their life and what you want to do for them in their life, and all they have to do is turn to you, God. God, we ask for your anointing today, and we thank you for the opportunity to let us all come together and learn, love, and laugh. We ask these things in Jesus' name, and all God's people said, Amen. And amen. All right, so let's jump right into it here. So what is, what is lying? And we all know what lying is, right? Lying is not telling the truth. Well, it, let's give the exact definition here. A lie is defined as an intentionally false statement. Intentionally false. You know that it's not true. So what is honesty? Well, honesty is the act of being honest. Duh. That's, I could have told you that, right? But if you look up the definition of honesty, that's what it says. So let's, let's break down what honest, what is, what is honest defined as? And honest is defined as free from deceit and untruthfulness or sincere. And then the definition of truth is being in accordance with fact or reality. So now let's kind of combine all three of these things. So when we lie, we are failing to be honest and true. So when we lie, we are intentionally being untruthful and deceiving. That's deep. We are deceiving. We are going against fact or reality or both of them. Why do we do it? Why do we lie? Why do we lie? Why have I lied so much? Right? But why do we lie? And we lie for various reasons. Motivations for dishonesty can be complex and multifaceted, really. But let's, I got a little list here. So let's Let's expose some of the most common reasons to lie. So reason could be avoidance of consequences and conflict. You know, people may lie to avoid facing negative consequences. Punishment, criticism, that's huge, right? Like I've, I've lied because of that. And these could be in personal relationships at work or even in other aspects of your life. But I've, I've done that. I'm guilty of that. I, I can't tell you how many times I've lied well, as a kid, especially, right? As a kid, I would lie to avoid facing consequences and punishment. And then as an adult, you kind of do the same thing, but then criticism becomes a big thing because nobody likes criticism. So you try to get away from that. And then even just conflict altogether. Like if my wife asked me a question about something small, but I knew she wouldn't like it or it would aggravate her, 
I would sometimes have the tendency to tell a little white lie to avoid that conflict. And that's not fair. That's not right. Here's another one. We lie to maintain an image. And this might be to create a more favorable impression or to maintain that image. It could be driven by a desire for social acceptance, approval, or self-esteem. You know, and and I think this, (laughs) you can thank social media for this right here. And I'm, I'm not on any social media other than these podcasts and platforms and me watching YouTube. That's the only social media I have. And I used to have Facebook and Instagram. And I can say that one of the best things I've ever done is get rid of those. But, you know, on social media, people post what they want other people to see. All the good aspects of their life, all the things that they're proud of. They put on this, this mask so that nobody knows what they could be struggling with or what they really have going on. I can tell you when I was cheating on my wife and being unfaithful, I would make these wonderful social media posts, making myself out to be the the best husband. When my wife wasn't happy in her in our marriage, you know, she would make these fake social media posts making it out like our little family was the best little family in the world and we didn't have anything wrong when really we did, maintaining that image, trying to portray ourselves to be something that we are. Another reason that people lie, protection of others. And I think this is, this is where people start to like justify lying sometimes. Because, you know, sometimes people lie with the intention of protecting others from harm or shielding them from uncomfortable truths. And while it may be easy to justify that, it's, it's not always okay. Most of the time, actually, a lie is not okay. And I've had to learn this because I definitely did that. You think I told my wife the truth about cheating on her and having affairs and sleeping with escorts? Not until I absolutely had to, but I can cool believe you I tried to lie about it. Did I come out and say anything right after the first time it happened? Absolutely not, because I knew how much it would hurt her. And then I wanted to avoid the conflict and the consequences. Preservation of privacy. People may lie to keep certain aspects of their lives private due to fear of judgment, embarrassment, or a desire to maintain personal boundaries. And that goes along with your social media again. Or even in, even in really like in social environments, period. Um, achieving personal gain. Individuals may lie to gain personal advantages such as financial benefits, promotions, or opportunities. This can be driven by a desire for success or a competitive mindset. And that goes to your people who are entrepreneurs, business people, you know, or in very just like cutthroat competitive companies where if you want that promotion, you've really got to work for it and prove yourself. So I could see where people could kind of slip into that, um, padding their stats a little bit, you know. So another reason we can lie emotional regulation. And that would be a coping mechanism to manage our emotions. You know, this could be downplaying feelings, pretending to be okay, or avoiding uncomfortable discussions. Sometimes we think, false stigma, that it's easier to just bottle it all up versus talking about it. It's easier to just, oh, I'm fine. I'll be okay. We try to deal with it. Peer pressure. This is a big one. People might lie under the influence of peer pressure, conforming to certain standards. Or expectations. That's huge. I mean, I think that's huge just in like as a teenager, even as an adult, right? Just wanting to fit in, not staying true to yourself. Fear of rejection. That one's self explanatory. Wanting to fit in. Fear of rejection. And then impression management. Lies can be told to create a more impressive or interesting narrative about oneself. That also goes into your social norms, trying to fit in, trying to be accepted. And that's. Guys, I do want to tell you that my podcast is unscripted, but I'm kind of reading off of an outline right here because I do want to be able to flow a little bit. So everything's unscripted. I'm, 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 I've made a list of reasons and put some stuff behind it, and I'm reading it, but I'm also monologuing off of that. So, so if it sounds like I'm reading off of a Word document, it's because I am, but I am trying to you know, give my own insight here. But just to be transparent with you all, it is right here in front of me. So now let's move on to... What happens when someone lies? This is big. Like maybe, maybe we should throw what lying actually does in here, right? So when someone lies, there can be various consequences, both for the individual who tells the lie and for those who are affected by it. And this is just a small list of, I mean, I'm sure there's way more. These are just like your big bullet items here. Erosion of trust. And this is one of the most significant consequences of lying. Because when you're caught in a lie, it could damage the trust in your relationship, whether personal or professional. And I think we all know that if you don't have trust in your relationship, then it's, 
it's hard and it can be built back, but it takes time. You can lose trust just like that. I mean, in the blink of an eye, but it could take years to fully gain it back. You damage relationships when you lie. That lack of trust, you know, that's going to strain the relationship. The lie can lead to, to feelings of betrayal, hurt, disappointment. And then I just hit on this, rebuilding trust after a lie is going, this is can be, no, is going to be very challenging and, and probably will require significant effort. There's a psychological impact. Constant lying has its psychological consequences for the individual who engages in the deceptive behavior. Guilt, anxiety, and stress may result from maintaining these falsehoods. Yeah, if you're weaving this web of lies, that's stressful, number one, because you're trying to remember what you've lied about, what you hadn't. You're living this second life. Um, you're, you're anxious, like, when is it all going to explode? And you feel guilty. I mean, you really do. You feel guilty. I would actually say that you feel shameful. You don't feel guilty yet. There's a difference. There's a difference in shame and guilt. And shame is bad. Shame is kind of like this embarrassment, right? But guilt is this really touching feeling that you get when you realize oh, what you have done is wrong and how it's affected other people. Then you feel guilty because you hurt for the other people. Shame is just hurting for yourself. People can isolate. So habitual lying can lead to social isolation as people may distance themselves from individuals they perceive as untrustworthy. This can result in feelings of loneliness and exclusion. I mean, this is true. If you lie enough, people aren't going to want to be around you. But also at the same time, if you're, if you're weaving this web of lies, you might tend to isolate from other people because maybe you're getting tired of lying. And so you decide that it's going to be best to isolate yourself from people so that you don't have to do that. Reputation damage comes from lying, both personal and professional. Because once your credibility is questioned, rebuilding a positive reputation definitely becomes challenging. You know, like they say, a first impression is a lasting impression until you do something to screw that first impression up. And now it's kind of like it resets. Strained communication. In relationships, constant lying can lead to strained communication. Duh. Open and honest communication is essential for healthy relationships. Any deceit can hinder effective interaction. And then you heard me talk about weaving the web of lies, the cycle of deception. A person who lies may find themselves caught in a cycle of deception. One lie may lead to another as individuals try to cover up previous falsehoods. Creating, here it is, a web of dishonesty. The web of lies, the second life, it gets so hard to maintain, impossible, so stressful. Now, I'm going to just hit like three little types of lies here, right? And I learned these from a podcast that I was listening to. So you have lies of commission, lying by omission, and character lies. So a lie of commission is like just straight up telling a lie, saying or telling something that is completely false, right? And then you're lying by omission, um, not telling the whole truth, leaving something out or omitting it. So like, yeah, I went to the bar, but, you know, there weren't any girls there. I just hung out with a couple guys when really and truly there were some girls there. Whatever. You leave something out. And then character lies. Um, I'm like to call, I had to kind of, the definition I found on this, I kind of had to modify it a little bit. But I'm going to go to this as deflecting, right? Often responding with a statement to make you seem like an amazing person that you would never do anything like that. You cannot believe you're being questioned in the first place. Also known as gas lighting. For instance, are you cheating on me? What do you mean? We've been married for five years. How, how, can, you, how can you ask that? I've done nothing but love you. How would you even accuse me of cheating on you? I can't believe that. Gas lighting. Deflecting. So we're going to keep all those in mind. And now I'm going to tell you my story online. And you got some of this. You got a lot of this. But. I'd like to say it all started out like I had, I'm not going to say I had a helicopter parents by any means. Um, I had loving parents, but my parents were strict. Well, my mom was pretty strict and I started lying about small things to hopefully not get in trouble with my mom. It never learned that 
I would get caught in the lie and it would be worse. And that happened quite often. And then as I got away with lies, it just started building that, 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 you know, falsehood that it's okay, that false insecurity that it's okay. And you get it. You get this insecure or this security in lies because you don't face the consequences. So you get this false security and then you just keep doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it. And they just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And, and I would end up, you know, in, in my relationship, I lied about talking and being in relationships with other women, emotional relationships, sexual relationships, uh, sleeping with escorts, erotic massage. I lied about watching porn. I lied about things I didn't even lie about. Like they didn't need lying them out. I, I can remember and not even in my relationship with my wife, but just talking to other people. I would lie about things that didn't even matter. And I was just weaving this intricate web of lies. And there were so many. There were so many lies. And honestly, I don't know how I did it for so long. I don't know how I carried on with it for so long because it was exhausting and so stressful trying to to maintain that and carry that out like it was awful. Yeah, now y'all got to think. I'm I'm almost 33. I'll be 33 on the 21st of this month. And I started lying as a kid. I mean, ever since you could well, what are we going to call it? Maybe let's just say like 10 years old. It's over 23 years. I've been lying and lying and lying. And then me and my wife started dating in 2000 and it's 2010 or 11. I think it was 11. So yeah. And I lied to her all throughout that. And then we've been married for almost six years. And, and, I, and I just started being honest with her, right? Or trying to be honest with her. Because I've slipped up and lied about some things even after my involvement in the program. And, and now granted, we'll get into that in just a little bit. But I have slipped up and still told lies. Like I hadn't just been a completely honest person. No matter how hard I've tried to be and wanted to be. And I just shattered her reality, right? Like when the truth finally came out. My wife did not know up from down, left from right. Her reality was shattered. Everything she had ever known to be true was no longer true, or she didn't know if it was true. And I'm just trying to put myself in her shoes, and that's got to be hard. Impossible. Like, I don't know how my hat's off to my wife, because she is also having to put a lot of effort into our marriage now. It's not just me. And there has been so much personal growth from my wife in, in just six months. There has been so much personal growth from where she was to where she is now. And now, granted, there are still things that trigger her, and that's going to happen. And, and, and we have to deal with those triggers. And we really have to be understanding. And it's hard to do sometimes. Like, sometimes she's triggered about some stuff, and I have to sit back and stop myself. And I have to take it in and think about it. Because my initial reaction sometimes wants to be like, I can't believe you're letting this bother you. But that's where this shattered reality comes into place. She can't help that it triggers her. She sees old behavior of mine, which brings up old me and scares her. And so she gets triggered. She can't help that it triggers her. That's natural. She's looking for safety. She's looking for reassurance. And we've had this conversation. She's had to tell me that so many times because I have reacted in the wrong way. And then just uh, breaking off from that, just a, a little short story about this. I just confronted my mom and dad the other day about lying to me about some health stuff they had going on. They didn't want to tell me because they didn't have all the answers yet. And my sister actually came over here one evening and ate dinner with us. And she told me some things and I was just completely caught off guard. I didn't have a clue. And so, of course, I called my parents and confronted them. And I said, hey, I, you're my mom and dad. You know, I love y'all. I want to know what's going on with y'all. And there's no need to lie to me about it. I would much rather you call me and tell me now when it could be something small and it turns out to be nothing or something fixable versus calling me a few months down the road and being like, hey, by the way, we got this going on. And now we have to do this. I'm like, shoot, call me and tell me I'll pray. I, I'll pray for you. I'll get people to pray for you. Like the more people pray the better. Let's not wait. And you don't have to lie to me about it. I'm your son. I, I want to help you. I want to support you. You've supported me for years and you still continue to support me. And, and I want to give back on that. And so 
they were upset that I confronted them about it. And finally I said, hey, neither one of y'all have the right to be mad. You lied to me. And when I confronted my mom, she tried to straight up lie to me. So not only did they, they lie by omission or not tell me about it, when I confronted my mom about it, she, she tried to just do straight up lie of commission. And I, instead, I said, hey, don't lie to me. Like, I know you're lying. So come on out with the truth. And why was she lying? She was trying to protect me. She was trying to protect me. She didn't want me to hurt. But that's not okay. I can understand why she did it. But if their situation progresses and then they come out and tell me, I'm just going to hurt more. I would have much rather known early to kind of start praying and preparing myself for what could be. And so I told him, you know, y'all lied to me. If anybody has the right to be mad, it's me. I should be mad, but I'm not. But have y'all forgotten that not lying and being honest is a huge part of my recovery program? Because my parents know what I have going on. And here y'all are lying to me and trying to make it okay. And I think that finally clicked when I said that. So what is that immediate feeling that we get? When we lie, when we feel accomplished, doesn't that sound terrible? Like now that we're sitting here thinking about it, we feel accomplished. We feel accomplished because we deceived somebody and we don't have to face the consequences or we made ourselves look better or we conform to all these social norms. <laughs> and that accomplishment is real crooked, right? Now we're thinking about it and we're like, ooh, that's bad. Like I should not feel accomplished for that. And you shouldn't. You shouldn't, but we do. But what do we really gain? Like, really and truly, what do we really gain? I mean, if we gain what we were trying to out of lying, well, y you got it, but you didn't get it based off the truth. So do you really, did you really earn it? Or did you really gain anything? No, you, you, you gain nothing. You gain nothing from, from lying, right? Long term, there, there's no good consequences to it. And the consequences in the short term might seem good, but they're not. They're, they're not. It's, it, I can promise you, be a man, own your stuff, and face up to it. And if you do something wrong, prepare to take the consequences. If it's going to hurt somebody, well, you probably shouldn't have done it. And sometimes it's better to just be honest and hurt them. Because I can promise you it's going to hurt them more when it finally comes out. And they find out that you lied about it. So you gain nothing. Short term or long term, you gain absolutely nothing. Now, not everyone has to have this tangled web of lies, such as the one that I was weaving. Because mine were pretty large. Mine were very large, to be honest with you. Well, they didn't start out that way, though. But uh, for me to be quite forward here, small eyes, as innocent as they seem, can be and are actually just as bad as the big ones. They are just as bad. And you might be thinking about it right now, like, no, a small eye. N yes, yes, they're terrible. And here's why. Just telling these small eyes can and will start to reinforce telling bigger ones. I promise you, I promise you. Um, you can't see me, but I'm sitting here pointing at the computer screen like I'm pointing at somebody. And my pastor says this all the time, and I'm taking it from him. Pastor Ryan, if you listen to this, thank you for this. I'm giving you credit for it. I got a finger pointing at y'all as the listeners, but I got three fingers pointing right back at me right here. I can promise you that telling small lies starts to reinforce telling bigger ones because it gives you the impression that I got away with it or, well, I guess it was okay this time. It builds the negative reinforcement that lying is okay. And that is what allows lies to get bigger and more complex over time. And then you find yourself weaving this web of lies because you can't remember what you lied about when it would have been easier, not maybe not easier, but it would have been better to tell the truth in the first place. Because then you don't have to remember what you lied about. You told the truth and the truth will set you free. It unburdens you. So lying is never okay, and it should never be your first option. Tell the truth. Be honest. Be open. Be transparent. Because lying is a terrible characteristic for a man to have. And I promise you, I promise you that so many of us have it. Once again, pointing all fingers at myself here. It's something I've done my entire life. It's something I still struggle with. I'm trying to overcome it to this day. I'm not perfect. I don't come to you with this podcast pretending to be perfect. I'm far from perfect, my friends, and I will never be perfect. One perfect person walked this earth, and that was Jesus Christ, and we will never be him. But we can go to heaven because of him. But even even to this day, and there have been times, like I told you, times where I've slipped up, like I really do try to be to be honest about everything, honest and transparent, open about everything, not only with my wife, but with other people. Now, granted, there are things that you don't tell other people. 
And that's mainly about like your personal stuff because you don't put your personal stuff out there for just everybody. But for people who are close to you, yeah, you got to be honest with them, guys. But I, I still catch myself wanting to lie. It's a conscious effort that I have to make to tell the truth sometimes. And I've caught myself in the middle of lies. In the middle of the lie, I catch myself. And then I'm just like, dude, come on. What are you doing? Like, we've talked about this, man. Like, if I could look in the mirror, I'm sitting here having this conversation with myself. You've, you've talked about this. We've talked about this. What are you doing? You're lying. Why are you lying about this? Like, it's stupid. You shouldn't even be lying about it. Just tell the truth. So then I have to stop in the middle of my lie and be like, you know what? I'm lying. This is the truth. Well, now I've already started the lie. So it's kind of like, well, is that really the truth? You see what it does? If I'd have just told the truth when I got confronted to begin with, then it'd have been a whole lot easier to believe because I was lying about something to not get in trouble and to not face the consequences. But if I'd have just told the truth, then my wife would have seen, all right, he's telling the truth. He's coming out telling me this knowing I'm not liking it. But then once I started lying and caught myself and then I come out and said, you know what, I'm lying. Here's the truth. And now it's like, well, is that really the truth? Or what else are you leaving out? So it gets, it gets harder to recover. It, it's, it's much easier to recover if you just tell the truth in the first place. And I say all of that to say this right here. Lying and dishonesty are equal to darkness. They will put you in a dark, dark, dark place. When you start weaving this intricate web of lies, and if you've been there, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And if you're there right now, then you probably feel exactly what I'm talking about. Well, the only way to drive out darkness is to bring in light, right? If you walk in a room and it's dark, what do you do? You flip the light switch, click, light comes on, not dark anymore. Honesty and truth, that's your light. That's your light switch. Just be honest. It's that simple. And you know, I'm guilty of it. I act like honesty is such a hard thing. And for some it may be. Myself included. It is. It can be hard. Especially when you've habitually lied about things for so long. But at the end of the day, we gotta just be honest. Gotta be open. Gotta be transparent. That's it. It's that simple. Y'all might be sitting here like, bro, it's not that simple. It really is that simple. Now, it takes some, some character changes. And it takes, it takes a lot on your part to really be conscious of what are you about, what are you thinking about, what are you about to say? I mean, you really got to kind of filter this, right? Because most of the time, especially, I know for me, being a habitual liar, I could lie like right off the top of the dome. Bam. I didn't have to think about it very much. I could, I could fabricate a lie quick. It was like improvising. I can tell you, if I could have put my... This is terrible to say, but if I could put what I, if I could put forward into what I, and let's see, how do I want to say this? What I put into lying and fabricating lies, if I could have put that effort into like anything else, there's no telling what I could have done with my life. There's no telling, but you got to be conscious of what you're thinking and about to say. Catch the lie. The devil, catch it. Catch him. Cause the lie comes from the devil, friends. I'm telling you, even a little lie is a big foothold for the devil. And once you let the devil in, he's in. And he just starts picking at you. He just starts planting these insecurities. He starts planting thoughts in your head that go against what God wants for you. And I read a book. The name of this book is uh, Don't Give the Enemy a Seat at Your Table. Don't Give the Enemy a Seat at Your Table. I just went and got it. I didn't have it back here at my desk. But I just went and got it so that I can uh, tell you who it's by. And uh, I could have looked it up on Google. but So I can tell you who it's by and just give you give you a little preface to this book here. So don't give the enemy a seat at your table by Louis Giglio. I think that's how you say his last name. I might have butchered that. Great book. It says it's time to win the battle of your mind. It says be grateful for the storms in life. They reveal who your true friends are. To the friend who sent the text that has become the title of this book, thank you for allowing God to use you to change my life. And I'm going to say reading this book right here changed my mind. And it's, it's, it's a relatively short book. It's not, it's not very long. Um, my mom gave it to me. It's uh, like 200 pages long. It's relatively short. And Tim Tebow, professional athlete, has got a review that's published in the book here. There's a bunch of other ones published, but Tim Tebow. I'm confident that don't give the enemy a seat at your table will not only clarify your faith, but strengthen it. Jesus has already won the greatest victory. Now it's our turn to fight to think rightly and fix our eyes on our good shepherd. And I'm just going to leave that at that. Um, but it talks about 
lying and being honest in this book. It talks about a lot of things in this book, but it talks about lying and being honest. So I highly recommend that you look that up and I will try to remember to put a link of it, a link to it, maybe on Amazon in the description of this episode. So just that, just that little lie is a big foot over the devil. And when you let the devil in, then he just starts going against everything. The devil is your enemy. We don't give the enemy a seat at our table. In fact, the only person that has a seat at our table is God, our Father. And it goes into great detail explaining it in that book. Highly, highly recommend. Very, very good book. Now, I'm about to hit y'all with something big right here. Ready for it? Rigorous honesty. Rigorous honesty. What's that? It sounds hard. It's because it is. It is hard. Rigorous honesty is being honest no matter what. No matter what. You know something's going to hurt somebody? Tell the truth. If you know that they're not going to like or want to hear what you're saying, tell the truth. Tell the truth regardless of how it's going to make somebody feel. Be true to yourself. Rigorous honesty. It's something that I practice every day. And it's hard. It really is, especially when you were a habitual liar such as myself. It's hard, but I promise you that things are better just by doing that. When you start doing that, practicing the rigorous honesty, things start getting better a lot faster than you might think. But only you can make that decision to be rigorously honest. I I can tell you to do it. I can explain to you how good it'll be for you. But you have to be ready to make that change and to be that person. And you'll never do it if you're not ready. I learned that, trust me. It, It took me a long time to be ready, but I saw what I was about to lose. And that was everything. Now, with that being said, (laughs) this is funny. With that being said, yes, you still need to be honest. (laughs) But if your wife or your girlfriend or your spouse comes to you with that question, gentlemen, we know what this question is. Does this make me look fat? Does this look good? Do I look bad in this? How does my makeup look? Now, by all means, I'm not saying, even if you hate it, even if it doesn't look good on her, because I mean, let's face it, like, well, okay, this is a big thing. Our wives have things that they feel good in and that they think looks good. And then we have things that we like to see our wives in. And so our, and if if you're anything like me, like my fashion is very simple. Like I'm a jeans and a t-shirt, shorts and a t-shirt type of person. Like I like to get dressed up every once in a while and go out on a nice date with my wife. But other than that, like, I don't have a whole lot of fashion sense. I really don't. I'm pretty simple when it comes to fashion. But you can't come out and be like, yeah, that looks terrible. I mean, that's being honest, but that's also very, very, very hurtful for your wife. So I would, (laughs) what I would recommend, if you don't like it or it doesn't look the best on her, you still have to find a way to tell the truth, but also be affirming to your wife, right? So... And this is just an example, guys, because this is like the impossible situation. Like, my man's saying rigorous honesty. Rigorous honesty. <laughs> then your wife hits you with a question that just made me look bad. And you're like, uh, no. <laughs> you, you can be honest, but still affirm your wife. Um, so kind of like, why don't you try this outfit? You know, it's always been one of my favorites. Or you could just be like, baby, look, I'm not a fan of it. I don't like the outfit, but I don't have to wear it. And I've always thought you're beautiful. And if you feel good in that outfit, then rock on because I'm rocking with you. So that just lets her know that you're not necessarily a fan, but you love her no matter what. And if she feels good in it, you're going to be attracted to her regardless. But it's important about her feeling good. And the funny thing about that is while I was preparing for this episode, I told my wife that and she gave me such the hardest time. We were laying in bed and she was just like, oh, really? So what do I have that you don't like? And I was like, oh, God, I just shot myself in the foot. She was just giving me a hard time, though, because there have been outfits that my wife brings home or puts on. And I'm like, no, absolutely not. I don't like that. Like, that's that's too much. But I don't tell her she can't wear it because she's a grown woman and she can make her own decisions. But yeah, she really did give me a hard time. I really did feel like I had just, you know, put my foot in my mouth. I'm good at that. All right, gentlemen, freedom and honesty, freedom and honesty. I can tell you that you when you start being honest even about small things first. When you start being honest, you are going to experience a new freedom in your life. I can't explain it. I can't tell you how much of a freedom you're going to experience because you just got to be there for it. But other people will notice this freedom in your life. It will 
shine through you and from you. It's almost like you're emitting the light of truth and honesty. You just, this burden is all of a sudden just lifted off of you just by being honest and telling the truth. Now, granted, you're going to face some consequences for the previous lies, and that's part of this. You got to bring everything to the light before you can lift that burden. If you just start being honest about things that happen from this day forward, but you're still got previous transgressions that you've lied about, you're still lying about them by not telling them. So you got to bring everything to the light and you just got to throw it all out there on the table and say, this is it and take your licks and it's going to be hard and it's going to be tough, but I promise you, God can get you through it. God can get you through anything. He puts us, he does not put us. God allows us to go through these tough situations, not to punish us or for judgment, because the Bible says that God's not going to let us go through anything more than we can handle. But if we feel that we are being burdened, he will always give us a way out. It explains that in the book, too. Telling you, you got to read the book. But the way out is him. God allows us to go through these tough situations so that we turn to him and rely on him and so that we realize that we need him to help get us through it. We put our faith in God and I can't tell you, I can't tell you the the load that just gets lifted off of you, the burdens that just disappear when you let go and let God handle it and you give it all to him. I felt like a new man. I really did. I felt like a new man. I don't know if any of y'all listen to Christian music, but I came across this song yesterday, matter of fact, on YouTube. Um, I was laying in the bed before we put our little girl down for bed. Me and my wife and my little girl were laying in the bed there, and we were playing some music on YouTube. And it's not a relatively new song, but now granted, I'm also new to the Christian music. So, but if you haven't heard it, I recommend you listen to it. But if you really want to get the full message of the song, I highly recommend you watch the YouTube video of it. And I will put a link to that in the description as well. But the song is by Micah Tyler and the name of it is Walking Free. And in the description, it's got a verse and it's a wonderful verse. It's John 8, 36. So if the sun sets you free, you will be free indeed. Man, what what a lovely verse. I'm telling you, it's a great song. I was watching it and it gave me chills. So to close this out today, I want you to, to be the man that God has called you to be and that God wants you to be. And that sounds hard, but it's really not when you Pray and talk to the Lord and listen for the Lord. Put your faith in Him. Put Him in the center of your life. Put Him first. It's not hard to do. God knows we're not perfect. God knows we're going to make mistakes. That's why Jesus died on the cross. Jesus took on the sin of the whole world. A perfect man took on all of our sin, picked up His cross, and and died on it for us. He burdened our sin. And He was laid in a borrowed tomb, where he rose three days later. So he defeated death in the grave. He defeated sin. He died for sin. He defeated sin. He rose again. And then he walked the earth and went back up to heaven to be with the Father. And he will return. The Bible says he is going to return in the same way that they saw him go. And my friends, that's going to be a glorious, glorious day. So be the man God has called you to be and wants you to be. And it's not that hard to do. You just got to trust in him. Put your faith in him. Put him first in your life. Talk to him. Have a relationship with God. Get in your Bible. Read some scripture. And if you don't know where to start doing that, you can download the Holy Bible app for your phone, iPad, tablet, whatever. And there's plenty of reading plans up there. Daily reading plans. Good stuff. I appreciate you coming in and checking out episode three of Manhood Unveiled. I'm going to get those links in the description for you. So check that out. Stay strong. I love you. Thank you so much for listening. Of course, it means a lot to me because I'm hoping this develops into a community for men, by men, 
If you like the episode and you like the podcast, please feel free to subscribe and get notifications for when I do upload a new episode. And always feel free to drop a comment, um, you know, and I'll try to respond to it. But until next time, stay strong and we'll see you then. Thank you.